Good morning, everyone. Today we celebrate the lives, work, and witness of Saints Timothy and Titus, who were companions of Saint Paul. Holy Mass begins this morning on page 101 in your Red Books of Common Prayer. When the Spirit comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, even the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness to me. And you are also witnesses, because you have been with me from the beginning. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. And blessed is his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Together we pray the collect for purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse all our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, God and King, all Lord and God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of God, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Just and merciful God, who in every generation you have raised up prophets, teachers, and witnesses to summon the world to honor and praise your holy name. We thank you for sending Timothy and Titus whose gifts build up your church by the power of your Holy Spirit. Grant that we too may be living stones built upon the foundations of Jesus Christ our Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sit now to listen attentively to the ministry of God's holy word. A reading from the word of God written in the book of Titus, chapter 1, verse 1 through 5. Paul, a servant of God, and an apostle of Jesus Christ for the sake of the faith of God's elect and the knowledge of the truth that is in accordance with godliness in the hope of eternal life that God, who never lies, promised before the ages began. In due time, he revealed his word through the proclamation with which I have entrusted by the command of God to our Savior. To Titus, my loyal child in the faith we share, grace and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus, 
our Savior. I left you behind in Crete for this reason, that you should put in order what remained to be done, and should appoint elders in every town as I directed you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalms 112, found in your Book of Common Prayer on page 620. Hallelujah! Happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in His commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their righteousness will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. The righteous are merciful and full of compassion. It is good for them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with justice. For they will not be shaken. The righteous will be kept in a lasting remembrance. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. The heart is right. They put their trust in the Lord. Their heart is established and will not shrink until they see their desire upon their enemies. They have given freely to the poor, and their righteousness stands fast forever. They will uphold their head with honor. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. As for us in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We now stand for the Holy Gospel. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John, the 10th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Glory, Glory be to Christ, Christ our Savior. Savior. <clears throat> Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. 
Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of Christ. Please be seated. This morning we celebrate the lives, the works, and the witnesses of Saints Timothy and Titus, who were companions of Paul. Here is what we know about these two gentlemen. Timothy and Silas are mentioned in the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Timothy and Titus are mentioned in the Acts of the Apostles. Timothy's father was Greek and his mother a Jewish believer. Paul chose him, Timothy, as a companion for his mission to Asia Minor but had him circumcised because the Jews who were in those places knew that his father was a Greek. Timothy undertook missions to the Thessalonians, Corinthians, and the Ephesians. Eusebius counts him as the first bishop of that city. Titus, who was a Greek, accompanied Paul to Jerusalem for the Apostolic Council. During Paul's third missionary journey, Titus was sent on missions to Corinth, from which he gave Paul encouraging reports, which you can read in 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 13 through 15. Paul calls Titus, my true child, in the common faith. You can read that in Titus chapter 1 verse 14. And Paul left Titus to organize the church in Crete. And it is reported that Titus was also the first bishop there. Usually uh, these two saints along with one other fellow, his name is Silas, Timothy, Titus, and Silas, they're usually celebrated after the feast of the conversion of St. Paul because of their close connection with Paul. Though these were all young and inexperienced, they were entrusted with missions and matters that helped form the very life and history of the church. Faithfulness, love, and devotion to Christ saw them through situations they could have never imagined. So what does our gospel today teach us about these men? And the word this morning is relationship. Jesus as the Good Shepherd. Jesus makes this link this morning between the relationship he has with his disciples, sheep like shepherd. And as the shepherd knows his sheep by name, the Lord Jesus knows each one of his disciples intimately and personally. The psalmist in Psalm 139 verses 1 and then verses 4 through 5 says, Lord, you have probed me and you know me. Even before a word is on my tongue, Lord, you know it all. Behind and before me, you encircle me and rest your hand upon me. Our relationship starts with God's initiative. First, God calls each one by name, just as he did with Abraham, Moses, and Samuel and even as he did with Paul, Timothy, and Titus. 
Today, as we celebrate the lives of these two men, we think of our relationship with God. And a simple question this morning, what is your relationship with God like? Have you done anything to deepen and develop more that relationship with God? And does that relationship with God call us into mission and ministry in the world in which we live? These two men were young and inexperienced. Titus, uh, sorry, Timothy always referred to as a young man. But in their lives, they set out to help Paul in his mission about spreading the gospel. And to despite the challenges that they faced, their faithfulness and love and devotion, that relationship they had with Jesus, whom they never met, was one that was solid, was one that was a foundation to also helping their relationship with Paul. Today, the gospel reminds us that when disciples hear the shepherd's voice, we respond with attentiveness and obedience. In your relationship with Jesus, are you hearing his voice? And what is that voice saying? Be selfish, stay in the house, don't get involved, be afraid of what is going on in the world. Or does that voice say, go out, share the good news, be an example, be a Christian, love one another. It's amazing that it seems to be the voice is now all of a sudden telling us something that contradicts the word of God. So because we wear a mask, we can't share his word. Because we do have to keep social distance and all of a sudden we don't know how to be nice and kind to people. But you know what's funny? Some of us never had it. So the pandemic isn't a, a big deal. Some of us just never had it in us. We, we love to spread the gossip, but not the gospel. And no matter how many sermons is preached, and who comes and preach them, because somebody will come Sunday and preach, and the same thing I say, they will say, Amen and Hallelujah, and it still does not make a difference. And that is what that relationship with Jesus does. A relationship with Jesus makes the difference. And that's how we can tell real Christians, by their fruits, we will know them, said Jesus, not Father. And we know these people who have relationships because like Timothy and Titus, we're not afraid to go out and share that good news and to help transform communities. Interestingly enough, many people think just by preaching, we can change the world, but it's also by living that we can change the world. And it doesn't take one man to do the job. It takes a whole village, a whole community, maybe a whole island to transform the way we think. And Paul says, even to the church at Rome, that we must be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Today we are called to re-examine the response of our personal commitment and relationship to Jesus Christ. And are we willing to go out on missions and to handle some matters in our world that can help to change the very core of what the world is becoming today? Faithless, filled with fear, Christless. I mean, people don't really care anymore. You know, I, I would have honestly thought that in a pandemic, when things get scary and, and things are uncertain, people would cling more to the God whom they say they love. But it's not the case. Our reality this morning, my friends, is to re-examine our relationship with God. And what does that relationship call us to do and to be? In the world in which we live. Today's celebration also asks us to look at our relationship with others. Paul had these fellas a part of his journey. I want to say to everybody in here and those watching virtually, in our Christian journey, find someone 
who can journey with you. Yeah? Yes. Not everybody bad and not everybody wants to be in the gossip and not everybody has negativity to give. There are some people who want to see you reach your full potential. Now, if you have been polluted by negativity and gossip and malicious behavior, well, then you will journey alone. But the hymn writer says we are brothers and we are comrades and we should stand side by side because our faith and our hope are the same. And so yes, we need to find brothers or sisters, companions that will help us along our spiritual journey. These weren't chief apostles as I call them. These were the side help. These were companions who assisted Paul in getting the work done. I, 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 I confess to this parish that we need more companions. Everybody tries to be the leader. Yeah, I'm sorry. Tuesday morning, but truth. Relationship. These fellows did not seek to be the leader, but they knew that God called them to be a part of the mission, to be a part of the ministry, to help, to spread the gospel. But Paul was the leader. We need people in this parish who can become better companions. You know, your real companions are your companions even when you're not in the room. Amen. Amen. Your real friends are people who don't mind doing the small, minuscule task that may not get all the glory and all the praise. Yes. The companions in ministry are the people not concerned about making Father look good because that should not be the focus. What should be the focus is our parish promoting the gospel and changing lives and transforming the way we live in community. Companions who help to foster and nurture that kind of behavior and attitude in the life of the church are the people that we need to journey along with us Amen. in this Christian experience, relationship. So today, I challenge you, as I challenge myself, to do some introspection as you approach the altar to receive the body of Christ. What's your relationship like with him? Does that Eucharist empower you to go out there this morning and share the good news with somebody? To take the gospel to where it's probably never been in Long Island and that's in some houses. You know, I saw a little thing come out last night, I'm sure you saw it as well, a little video, a little snippet of a little rabbit talking to a big moose. And uh, the little rabbit from Long Island, or you all saw it, and the big moose from Nassau. Now, I know everybody's chuckle at things, but when I see things, I see them with sermonic eyes, and I will speak out against it. And the little rabbit telling the moose, you need to go back to Nassau. Because well, you, come, you, you come here to, the, well the moose said, I came here to work. So I've been here for two days. The rabbit said, well I'll pay for you to go back, but you can't stay here in Long Island. And he said, I don't give an elephant's feather where you come from, but you can't stay here. And we don't want you here. Now, I don't know if that's how y'all think that's cute or that's something people should think about this island, but the devil is a liar. And I want to put out there that not everybody in Long Island thinks and acts that way. We, we want to be a hospitable, generous, kind, Christian people, and we welcome people. Now, if you don't behave yourself, we don't give an elephant's feather. You have to go back where you come from. But you are welcome here because this land is my land. This land is your land. This is our Bahamas and this don't belong to no particular group of people, color or race. 
this Bahamian soil. So I had to slip that in there this morning because that, that annoys me because going around and people chuckling about it. And that is not the image that we want to give people as Christians in Long Island. That's not the relationship that we have with God. Imagine if God was to treat y'all like that this morning. Y'all are not worthy to come for communion. Only I can take communion. Then what's the purpose of coming? I want us really this morning to think about that word relationship here. Yeah? Because we don't have healthy relationships with each other. We don't. And how could you say you love God whom you've never seen? Hate your brother and sister who you see every day. Think about that word relationship. Think about the shepherd calling the sheep into relationship. Think about these men who traveled with Paul because of the relationship they shared with Paul. Think about our relationship and how we are supposed to imitate the lives of the saints. I pray today that because of these two men, we will strengthen our relationship with God and each other for the sake of the kingdom. Thanks be to God. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us now stand and profess what we believe as Christians in the words of the Apostles' Creed found on page 106 in our red books of common prayer, followed by our intercessions. The response after each prayer will be, Hear us, Lord. Together we profess, I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of As God is moved by the sincerity of our repentance, so too God is pleased by the faithfulness of our prayers. Let us offer our prayers to God, saying, In your mercy, hear us, Lord. You have called us, O God, to follow you. Give us the grace to listen to your call, to lay aside the things of this world, and to follow you. In your mercy, us, Lord. you have sent us, O oh God, into the world to tell the story of your love and faithfulness. Give us a holy zeal for the proclamation of the gospel in this place and in all the world. In your mercy, hear us, Lord. you have called, O oh God, persons of varieties of gifts to serve your church. Bless, we pray, the ministries of musicians and artists, scholars and writers, pastors and teachers, that their work enrich our common life and offer us a glimpse of the life to come. In your mercy, hear us, Lord. You gave life, O oh God, for us and for all people. We remember before you those who are sick, those who mourn, and those who rejoice, as we have reached out to us in love. So inspire us to be present to those we have named before you. In your mercy, hear us, Lord, all together. As we are faithful in prayer, O oh God, so, so make us faithful in following you, that loving and serving
become what sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Devoutly kneeling, let us therefore confess our sins together. Together we confess, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and one another in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are sorry and repent of all our sins for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you. upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now that we have been forgiven, stand to share God's peace. We use Form A, found on page 124. We are the body of Christ by the one Spirit. We were all baptized into one body and have all been made to drink of the one spirit. Let us then pursue the things that make for peace and the love of common life. The peace of the Lord who calls us into relationship be always with you. And also with you. We wave to one another as a sign of God's peace. We sing the hymn 401, 401.
this bread and this wine to offer. The fruit of the earth and the work of human hands, they will become our spiritual food. All this come from you, O Lord, and of your own immediately. Blessed be God forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Father Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down from heaven, lightening upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith, and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the name of your eyes. Bless the seas in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the eyes. Eucharistic prayer form E, page 142. Let us pray. Sovereign Lord and Father, to you be glory and praise forever. In your boundless wisdom, you brought creation into being. In your great love, you fashioned us in your image. In your tender compassion, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior, to share our human nature. In the power of the Holy Spirit, he overcame the power of sin and death and brought your people to new birth as first fruits of your new creation. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. On 
page 144. As our Savior has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. joining us in virtual worship this morning and cannot receive Holy Communion tangibly at this time. We now encourage you to find a moment to make your spiritual communion with God. And to aid you, we offer you the following prayer. May this holy sacrament preserve your body and your souls to everlasting life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. We sing the hymn at communion 
826 826 
solemnity of the conversion of St. Paul the Apostle. It is our hope to welcome to our parish the assistant curate of the historic parish of St. Andrew, the Reverend Wellcott Ashton Bain, along with three of Father Ethan's servants. And so we thank God that even priests have companions who help them in their journey. So we show them that they are welcome to Long Island and that this is the best island because we have the best people that the Bahamas has to offer. Amen. We now stand for this mission. Brothers and sisters, like Timothy and Titus, go in peace. Serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Our accessional hymn 830, 830. Thank you. 